Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Daryl Smith. And I'm Chris Picard. Welcome to... Film Banter. Film Banter, the We're episode back. of about who tonight? The Quentin Tarantino. Amazing you Mr. Quentin guessed. Tarantino. There you go. If you look at our brilliant backdrop... He looks really good. All the nice great characters. You see Brad Pitt over on your... Uh, I believe that's your right. Yep, yep. Uh, it's our left, my but shoulder I believe here. it's their right. We have David Carradine it, yep. there, Sam Jackson, very you big. Got you it's pretty cool. Uh, Daryl Hannah there with the eye we patch. Her. We have Megan Madsen, Forster. Like Vivica Fox there next to Christelle Darryl. Fultz over your shoulder. Pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, it looks great. Pretty they did cool. a great job. It looks great awesome. Great job. I, I love it. And if you guys can't figure it out, we're doing a whole show today about the career of Quentin Tarantino. We're going to cover all of his films. Yep. Uh, we'll cover also the films uh, that he just wrote. Uh, and acted in as well. And basically, this is kind of stemming from our the new release of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes, that's true. Two uh, weeks Chris ago. and I debated. He, as you may have noted, he interrupted me constantly through the show. I love the film. Because we talked about so it last week. He's so vehement. He's so incredibly intense about Mr. Tarantino. I am. And of course, he is his my goal is to win an Academy Award, which I feel are off the table this year due to the violence and the See, length. I disagree. It's I just don't really think it's that great table. a film. I, I just don't think it's that great a film. Yeah, but personally. I think I think the cat. I think. The, Hollywood loves movies about themselves. They love movies that have the glamour that showcases But they're not going to put a movie out that, 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 that kind of promotes a violence. The violence at the end of this film is so gratuitous. It's so over the top. I think that that's where yeah, Quentin... I don't know. It's I almost, scene. And as I said to you last week, I almost feel that Quentin just kind of said... He was giving him that old middle finger there and just saying, hey, you know what, Hollywood? I don't want your nomination. That's why I'm giving you this violence. You know, he wants, he likes the nomination. What are you kidding? Uh, I love I Quentin, know. but he, he, he's very impressed with himself. Uh, and I don't mean well that be. as an insult. Could I tend well to think be. he'd love to get recognized for this film. Yeah, I, uh, I think he'll get possibly. nominated. Will he win? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the film probably won't win, won't win Best Picture. It will not. But he could win Best Director. You never know. It, dep it really depends upon the rest of the competition that's coming out indeed. this year. But anyway, well, all right, let's um, begin the beginning. Why don't we just jump here. right into it? Let's start it right from the top. We're going to go with right Reservoir into Dogs, Reservoir Dogs, yeah. which is the first big com commercial uh, Tarantino film. Exactly. That most of you have already heard of. 1992 I hope. It came out uh, at the Sundance Film Festival. There you go. Wooed everybody, and this yeah. was the film that ushered him into the uh, into the into the, uh, into, the uh, into the concept to the mindset of the industry. Correct. And from the success of this film, he was able to then get. Pulp Fiction made. I just want to tell people that I just I want to warn them that, that, that this this hair that you're looking at, I am not Al Pacino in a red-haired wig. I am, in fact, Daryl oh, You're Coop's not really. No, I wasn't really sure. Not. I know it's hard to tell. Yeah. But, uh, of course, so you know, I do have fun. my illustrious turkey neck, yeah. the, uh, Mr. Clint Eastwood. It's, it's just my homage to him. Yes. It's my homage to him. I could see Clint. a dog hanging on to that. And you can I just could, too. Going, swinging it along. <laughs> very true but, indeed. Uh, but back to Reservoir Dogs, it's a very... Just a very watchable film. It's a it quick is. watch. It's, it's what, an good, hour and yeah, 46 you know, minutes? You know, absolutely. it's not long. Quentin has the very amazing ability to incorporate music into his yeah. movies. All his films are kind of a signature thing. Although not so Always much have a strong Inglourious. soundtrack. Not Inglourious. Well, see, Inglourious is probably the first film that he made that, that really had was... Had a score. Had a score. Had a musical score. He had a couple songs. There was a Bowie song in there from Cat People. Was uh, there? Oh, Putting Gasoline, on Fire. Put Off Our Gasoline. Okay. Other than that, though, it's mostly a score which yeah. that film needed. The I genre agree. needed that. We'll get yeah, to that in a little bit. It's more of a dramatic thing. You don't want to watch... Uh, you don't want to hear Stuck in the Middle with You back in the Nazi exactly, era. Exactly, yeah. It just and and the there's word. a moment of, that's similar to that that I'll touch on when we cover Django Unchained. Mm -hmm. He did something like that in that film. But this film has a great soundtrack. It's a classic soundtrack. It really does. Uh, if, you, if anybody has listened to it at home, it has several clips from the film of Stephen Wright who in the film was just like the radio disc jockey. That Stephen kind of, Wright, the comic? Yeah, he no was kidding. the voice of the radio. He was okay. K. Billy. K. Billy, Super Sound yeah, of the yeah. 70s Weekend, okay. which was in the background of a lot of the film. Oh, interesting. In the opening of the film, when they had that wonderful scene at the diner that the camera just tracks around right, the diner. Right, right, um, And they're talking about all different kinds of things. Yeah. They do touch on, did you guys hear K. Billy Super Sounds of the 70s Weekend? And they start touching about the songs they've been heard in a You're long time. You're talking so fast, even I can't understand. Uh, I thought that came out pretty eloquently, in my opinion. Really? Uh, so anyway, the soundtrack has bits from that. Of, it has of bits. Stephen Wright. Oh, there you go. Uh, throughout the soundtrack. This is and a violent film, just remember, folks. It's very it's violent. It's over the yeah, top. It it's an R-rated violent film. One of his film. more violent films. Absolutely. And it's so. shockingly violent at times. It is indeed. 
Not so, for the, uh, uh, the, the meek. But, now, you know. once in a while, some of our tech people will come walking in behind the scenes. And we often say to ourselves, that since we're sitting here, we say, gee, I wonder if the whole thing is just going up in flames back there. They don't know no, what's going it's on. Fine. It's fine. It, but, but because you know, there's quiet amongst our beloved tech crew, that we feel that things are okay. So that's yeah. always a good sign. You'll know so, something's wrong. When Adam yeah, we, comes I, running I, I and you're sweating, so. then we know there's a problem. Then we are in a five minute increment, folks. I'm, I, I, I'm just warning yeah. you here that all of a sudden we're just gonna flip over and the Pulp On Fiction. Dime, we're gonna stop. The Pulp Fiction poster is just gonna appear gonna out of the blue. And we're gonna be ready to go. Well, ladies oh, and gentlemen, look, what happened. look Beautiful. at what happened, I'll tell you. My favorite movie of all time, as you uh, could have guessed right gentlemen, here. There it is. Uh, this is mine. Chris Trace, look at this dude. Not right now, I gotta focus. Okay. You hold on to it. Okay, but the beautiful, film, lovely Yuma Thurman right there. It's Uma, okay. not Yuma. It's Uma. Well, no. You say Yuma. Well, I have a sense of humor mm -hmm. about That's Yuma's name. That's debatable, folks. Look at that beautiful woman. But she's wonderful in this oh, film. Oscar-nominated really performance. Yeah, was she? She was. Best actress? Supporting actress. Supporting. Yeah. Interesting. But uh, this film was uh, the big, uh, huge entrance into the consciousness of the world. This film won the Palme d'Or. The Palme d'Or, correct. D'Or, at the, the beautiful... Which festival? Can film Very festival. good. It's the Cannes. Yes, 1994. Most people want to say Con. It's not. It's can. kind of like Copenhagen. Yeah. It's actually Copenhagen. Can, can. Yeah, like that. It's Copenhagen, ladies and gentlemen. It is wonderful, Copenhagen. Wonderful, wonderful Copenhagen. No. Danny Kaye ruined it for everybody back when he did that Hans Christian Andersen. Hans, oh, Hans Christian, Christian Anderson. Anderson. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I hated that. Dun. You didn't? I didn't care, oh, I I didn't like care for it. I like Danny Kaye. It's all right. No, he's all right. I just didn't care for that song. Oh, okay. He was in the great, the original, uh, the, 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 uh, Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Oh, yes, yes, great, yes, Which yes. was remade by Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller, yeah. Horrible. Yeah. Oh, what a waste of time. I read that book in school when I was a kid. It was a good there book. There you go. Fine book. Um, but here, here we have John Travolta. Here we go, a great trio right there. And remember, there. ladies and gentlemen, John Travolta kind of had fallen off the radar. He really Well, he was, was box office poison for a long was. time. But well, Travolta always remembered him. Well, look who's talking, you know, look who's talking too. And then suddenly he look came back three. into this. <laughs> yeah, right. right before this. I know, I know. And then suddenly, here he was in this. And and I, well, Bruce had already made Die Hard. Well, course. Bruce, that was made. In he was already a. He big, was already a bona fide star. He was star. a bona fide. A so big this star. was a big catch for him in this movie. Correct. He, he was at the peak of his power in this movie when he was you cast know, as Butch. And he's more or less the best actor. He's the he's the main star in this film, as far as in, I'm concerned. Many times, although he, it does kind of fluctuate he's got between. The he's kind of the protagonist for a lot of it. You're the right. Sam Jackson and uh, and the uh, Yuma characters just kind of fluctuate. But then we kind of go, the last two-thirds of the film, we more or less concentrate on the Bruce and the, the, the drug, not the money deal that's going down. Yeah. And, uh, well, Bruce is really only in the, uh, the big part is the second one, the gold watch, the whole story that yeah. focuses on him as the boxer. Right. And then his interactions with the mob, which is Ving Rhames. Exactly. Uh, and then how that plays into the other characters. You know, you know, so it's I, just a I really... I it was a bit uneven at the time I saw it, but in retrospect, you know, we have the whole homage to, uh, you know, in Europe they call... Uh, you know, a quarter pounder. With cheese. They call it Royale with cheese. Royale with just cheese. The just the dialogue is what really stood stuff. out. I know. And again, the so, soundtrack was so so down to earth and the music incredible. Film. We have that great. Just you got Mr. Lou in the beginning. We have the great that, dance scene between uh, you know oh, Yuma did, and the John. Teenage way, I think. And you know, doing, that scene uh, was great. Fantastic you know, stuff. I'm, There's the dance scene right there. We always say that that should have been a chain restaurant. He should have made that restaurant Jackrabbit Slims. I know. It would have been cool. People would have loved to go. I think so too. I don't know why they didn't do it. Well, because it's I guess too much it money, money but people would go. You know. Hey, we got Bubba Gump restaurant. Why couldn't we get this? Well, I well, guess. Well, that's Bubba Gump. That, that was the big competitor at the Oscars that year. Was it? It was Pulp Fiction, my favorite movie. Mm. Forrest Gump, a film I loved. Which one? And one of the best films ever made, Shawshank Redemption. All up for Best Picture that oh, year. Oh, wow. Along with The Madness of King George. Uh, and I can't remember what the fifth. Oh, the fifth one was your quiz show. That was a solid oh, wow. year. That was a solid year. I would argue. And of course, uh, yeah, Forrest Gump won the deal. It did. But uh, as, looking back, as yeah. much as I like all those films, Shawshank should have won Best Picture. You think so? And if you, the, if you, More so than your favorite film of all time? That's the thing, is that it's such a beautiful movie. It's such a unique movie. Shawshank, I'm saying. I haven't seen if it in you, such a long time. If we were to pull 100 people on the street in New York City, I think most of them would say that Shawshank's their favorite movie. Well, there you go. It's listed for a long time well, as number e. one. E.T. E. was on, right on in 1980. Uh, yeah, you know, that's same, still a favorite. Same year we had Raging Bull. We mm -hmm. had Ordinary People, which won. It won Best Picture. And now yeah. you mentioned Ordinary People. And, yeah, you know, it's oh, a good movie. Oh, yeah, I remember that film. No, I remember it. E.T.? Yeah. You know, I know, it's come true. Come on. 
But uh, anyway, we're, we're digress. back to Pulp Fiction. We are there's, just, um, there's just so much to love on yeah, this, it in is. this film. It is. You get so many moments that are so memorable that not, that not only are they could be funny, they're shocking. Like you know when somebody's oh yeah, gets yeah, head blown off. Yeah, yeah, run down. And we down. get the overdose with the, the overdose with that woman. Yeah, right. You know, and, and then I we also what to talk about. Holy shit! I know that is the Ving Rhames race. Totally out of this. This is also, I feel, a very good double companion with another film by Tony Scott called uh, True Romance. Yes, which was with, written uh, by Quentin Tarantino. Exactly, yeah. and it was, and it just feels like a companion piece yeah, to I Pulp could see in it. a well, way. Yeah, exactly. The, the, you could totally yeah. watch them back to back without Absolutely. a problem. Absolutely, and I love the photography on True Romance. It just has wonderful color and so I agree. Forth. See, Tony but, Scott's uh, one of my all-time favorite filmmakers. I love him too. I really too. was upset when he killed himself killed and jumped, himself, off a bridge. jumped off a bridge. There, he made some awesome. Maybe we'll do a whole Tony Scott show sometime. That I really would be a bad him. idea. He was great. Most people don't know who the hell he is. I admire Ridley Scott. To me, Tony Scott's films are a little bit more fun. They're more frenetic. Whereas I go, suppose, but Ridley no, Ridley's more, the man. Ridley's the man for me. He's more uh, artful. There's more serious tone films. Rid well, true. Tony usually just stayed in action. That's Possibly that was so. his genre. You Very know? possible. But uh, I can't say enough good things about Pulp Fiction. I know it's, it's a great just, movie, and if you haven't classic. seen it, you're an idiot. I mean, you I'm going to be very Fiction. blunt. Uh, you really need to go on. And but of now, course, bam, we're going to do Jackie on Brown. to the third film in uh, the retrospect of our ten, his, of our nine, actually ten film retrospect. His first doing film tonight. that was an adaptation of a book. This is based yeah. on Rum Punch, which was a novel by Elmore Leonard. Got to say, it's one of my least favorite films. Of uh, this. It's not my f favorite, yeah. but I really do admire this film. I, it's a slow-paced. film. Doesn't even feel to me like this. a Tarantino film. Oh, it does to it, me. It, it almost feels almost. It almost has like a little bit of a Scorsese kind of. You know, the characters are a bit Maybe. more intense, and there's yeah. a there's a not a mafia and this is a edge. Slow build. I do love the the incredible Foxy Brown herself, Pam Greer. Uh, Pam Greer, she's yeah. just a knockout. Another act uh, actor that he kind of not pulled uh, from obscurity, but brought back well, to memory. You know, she's you know? been doing a lot of B films, yeah. and he brought her back in. I, I think Jackie Brown is a, this. I, I love her too. Yeah, uh, De Niro is good in this film too. And yeah, he, he plays Louis some, Gar. He plays he had some bad films. Was friends with Samuel Jackson, uh, and I love little Bridget Fonda in this movie. Yeah, this is one of her best roles. It's a shame she well, kind of you know, uh, she kind of fall off the grid. Yeah, after but, this, uh, what did Point she do? Blank. I love Point Blank. Um, she's great. She was great in that film, and she was also great in a little movie called Aria. I know Aria. Aria. That Aria. was Alan Parker. It's, it's an Alan Parker yeah. movie, and it's a combination of about twelve different opera exactly, yeah. arias put to music and uh, storylines and so forth. There's Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton right was there. a great casting. Sam choice. Jackson, just another staple yeah. in every every you franchise know what's really, that ever lived. I agree, but you know what's cool with Michael Keaton in this role? He plays Ray Nicolette, an ATF agent, in this yeah. film, right? But then, when Out of Sight came out uh, the next year, in 2008, the, the George Clooney Soderbergh film, film oh, starring right. J Lo George, and, and George yeah, Clooney, that was also based on an Amor Leonard novel. Correct. And in that film, his character Ray Nicolette shows yeah. up, and Keaton comes back to play the role again. Oh wow! I thought that was awesome. Then there was that other Elmore Leonard uh, film, uh, the the one with the Travolta did, uh, and, and it got a, a, a it was it was Which a big one. Oh, um, get shorty, get shorty, get shorty. Yeah, there that was, you go. He did that after this. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was just one of the big movies. Really he did nice right after to see. This. Really nice to see Travolta's career. Just yeah. Go, Through go the nineties, he was in the roof, and then in the mid two thousands, he started going down again. But he's still working. And now here it is today, and his career has just gone right into the. Well, dump. you know, he's doing. Right, he's still doing some decent it. stuff. <laughs> We reviewed the him poof. a couple weeks ago in the, the Poison Rose. It wasn't bad. Rose, which was I thought horrible. he did a good job. Well, he did know, what he could he with tries, it. But, uh, and I then he did try. a movie called the, the, There a Was shit. a Painter where he was doing... Uh, he was doing uh, uh, he was doing uh, copies of famous paintings and oh, wasn't that was called the forger. the forger? Yeah, the forger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's just doing B movie after C movie yeah. after D movie. He's gone back into the dumper. But it's, it's almost that like he, he needs a, with Tarantino again. It's too just bad the one time. he couldn't get you know back, another one. Tarantino couldn't have bust, I know. thrown him back in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It would have been kind of cool. Or maybe in the Irishman, you know. Well, that's Scorsese. Scorsese could have thrown yeah, him Scorsese's in. Yeah, Scorsese's never worked yeah, with Travolta. Exactly. But uh, but anyway, I do enjoy Jackie Brown. It's a caper film. Not it's a got great a lot film of characters. For me. Way too long. Robert Way Forster is great hell. in this film. I love Robert Forster. He's awesome in this. He's he's. This is he's a return. Unpalpable. For him. He's just so good. He, he is. You can't move that. And we got him into a beat. He's solid as three. a rock. Yeah, he's wonderful. I think I got a picture of he's Forster just, coming well, up. Well, he's, he's only awesome. in the second season of Twin Peaks, not in the, the first. The third, I said. I said season yeah, three. The third. Season. Well, when I mean the second coming of Twin Peaks. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a star in that. He takes over for Michael. The cop. No, Michael. 
Michael, yeah, what's his name? Michael, his real name is yeah, Michael. Yeah, yeah, Michael, uh, it'll come to me. Yeah. He was a sheriff. Yeah, he, he was a sheriff. He didn't want to act anymore. He's still alive. He's retired. But yeah, yeah, he just didn't he's really want to do it anymore. But yeah, there's the lovely Bridget kind of Fonda. You can there see her move over. There she is. Her, there's, yeah, and if I move over. Yeah, and this is the best, arguably, that she's ever looked. She's great in this film. Uh, and she had a fun so character in this I movie. Loved her I liked point her in this. I like that film. I don't think I've seen Point Blank. Point Blank? I don't think I saw it. It was a remake of La Femme Nikita, is what it was. I Remember thought, La Femme Nikita Yeah, but by I thought the remake of Luke that was The Professional. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm no. sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, you're no. off the cuff, No, 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 no. You're, you're thinking of Point of No Return. Point of No Not Return. Not Point Blank. Yeah, Point Blank. No, I'm Point of No Return saying. was great. And that's a remake of, of La, La Femme, Femme Nikita. Nikita. You're absolutely right, exactly. 100%. Yeah, I just got confused Correct. by the title. Okay. I thought you were trying to say Gross Point Blank. Now, if, you, if I move over a little, you can see Sam Jackson's got gross haircut. And here we go. Now we're on the Kill Bill. We're moving on to a roaring rampage of revenge. Kill Bill Volume 1, Kill Bill Volume 2. I love this film. They're great. This is a great movie. And of course, there is a full fledged three and a half hour version. Four this. hours, I think. It's four hours, and it's called The Whole Bloody Affair. It came out in 2011. Right, and I believe there, it, it's a fan cut, is it not? No, Quentin did it. Quentin did he it? He made the cut. He actually premiered it at his at his movie theater before it was his movie theater. Before I think right before he bought it. And there's they had also a screening a, there. There's also a fan cut. Well, there might the be a fan thing. cut as I well. I think that yeah. preceded his cut. It could have very I believe well so. done that. Yeah. Somebody just had done it. But Quentin had the, all that wonderful uh, cartoon footage of Lucy Lee. That was cool. Uh, Lucy where Lou, her parents yeah. are, Lucy Lou, where her parents are getting, mm -hmm. uh, or just, you know, they're getting killed by exactly. a mafioso gang. And it gives gang. her a lot of a backstory. And there we have some of the animation right there. Kind of cool. This is a fun movie. He, I think it Quentin really, really went for it in this film. He really uh, did so you know, many cool things. This is probably the best film he ever made for me. It's Just pretty as far amazing. As, as the, the lore, you know, he really brings together the, the, the not, I hate to say the folklore, but but the whole background, yeah. you know, he really just... I think on a Thurman. cinematic scale, this might be his best work. Yeah, I these think movies. so, too. Uh, you know, and so I'm not even fond of Kill Bill 2. stuff too. going on here. Uh, See, I like Kill Bill 2. I too. like Kill Bill 2, but I think that as a standalone film, Kill Bill 1 just knocks it out well, of the Well, there's table. so much... Yeah, I mean, there's a lot more I mean, this is where we just one. have, you know, that incredible scene where Yuma goes into that... The that, that hotel area, whatever it is, and that she's just... That was amazing. And there's like 50,000 guys. There we are. Yeah, the, the massacre. Out. That was great. He massacres them all. Yeah, it, it's like a Bruce Lee deluxe. It's, it's just awesome. a. It's almost like a John Woo film. It really where is. Where she just yeah. destroys everybody. It's amazing it's such piece a of work. Cool it's sequence. a bloodbath. Yeah. Oh my God! Look at behind us there. And I believe this was the first uh, collaboration with director of photography. Uh, Robert Richardson, and who he's okay. worked with on all subsequent films. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. There's a picture of him in here somewhere. Okay. You know, he's got the white hair and the white beard. He's amazing. It's in there somewhere. You might see it, you might but, not. But uh, this movie is so beautiful. This little Chiang Kai-shek back there. She later went on to be in, I believe, the, uh, not Chiang Kai-shek, that was a great uh, yes. Chinese leader who was yes. a horrifying guy. Yes. I say Chiang Kai-shek because I'm being stereotypical. You That's are very being unfair of me. Oh, Please forgive me. I, I do not mean to say that. <laughs> it's punch the you way out of this camera frame. frame. But she's also the same little girl that I believe was in Cincinnati. City, was she not? Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm her name is like sure. Zing Zhao or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and she, you yeah. know, she does some head cutting, some head chopping. I don't think she was Sin in City. Sin City. That, that wasn't her. I don't think so. Meow me yeah, or meow I don't know. I'll look it up, but I don't think oh, it is. Meow me, oh meow. But uh, this film has so uh, many great characters. Yeah, you have so many bad oh, characters. I just like making this noise now. Meow me, meow me, meow. Yeah, boy, now, very stereotypical. Sweet and sour. She's horrendous in this movie, Daryl Hannah. Horrendous. She gets it good. No, meaning her character's evil. Oh, oh, no. As an actress, she's great. Yeah, yeah. But she does a great job playing as evil. Yeah. And she gets hers in a really good way. I was at a I was at an airport and Daryl was right next to me. She's probably calling Jackson Brown on the phone who she was dating at the time. She and wasn't with I, John F. Kennedy Jr. Oh, he's been dead. Uh, he was dead at this well, point. Well, no, this was many, many yeah, years he ago. Died she might have been. No. But she was with Jackson at the time. At the time. Okay. And I'm staring directly into her eyes, and she's staring directly into mine. Oh, my God. Was she was horrified she... or any other way? No, she she wasn't at all. In fact, I thought she was going to, you know, start licking my face or something. Because oh, I just couldn't take my eyes tell. off her. I, I, and I wonder if she knew that I recognized her, which I did. Probably. But I, she also may have just thought that I was just attracted to her because she is a gorgeous blonde. Or maybe she thought you were her limo driver picking her up. No, I don't think so, but that's possible. Because <laughs> you were there to pick up Peter Weller or something. I was something. there to pick up, well, I did have a Peter Weller moment you did. You've told that also. story on the air. It's a wonderful story. You know, I had a Worth crush telling. on Daryl Hannah when I was in first grade when Who I saw didn't? Splash. Come on. Yeah, it's Who Splash. Who didn't have I a crush on her? Are you kidding me? But, um, but anyway, this film is We're great. We're still on Kill Bill 2. I think yeah. we can move along to Kill Bill 2. We're Kill Bill 1. We can move on to Kill we Bill 2. We can jump to Kill Bill 2. That's we fine. can jump if, uh, Kill Bill, if the Kill powers Bill. that be are, are so inclined but, to change um, the backdrop into a Kill Bill 2 scenario. Some of the scenes that I scenario. love the most 
uh, come from Kill Bill Part Two. Really? My one of my favorite scenes. It might be my favorite scene in both movies. I know it's not a big action the, scene. Yeah, uh, the, when she goes to the master. Yeah, the whorehouse. The, the whole. Yeah, and she goes to see the guy who was who the, built the sword and where she gets. Well, the no, sword. that stuff is awesome. That I scene, love that. Was she getting her training on yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. Although then, then she goes to see the the Hanzo sword when, when she goes to see him. Right. Played by. There he is. Yeah, that guy is so good. Too. Amazing. He was great. Amazing. Those sequences were great. I know. But the scene I was And he's teaching say, her right there how to break through the break coffin. Through the, well, that's that for she's going to be in. Yeah. I know later on. Which seems impossible. It's to me. impossible. But it's a great scene. And to literally take your hand and yeah. chop through a coffin. Come but on. But there's a great scene with Carradine. But no, the scene I, I was referencing was you maybe remind me of other scenes too. But I love the scene when she needs to find Bill and she goes to the guy who owns the brothel who basically raised Bill like a son. Oh, okay. And it's the actor Michael Parks playing a Spanish ah, role. Ah, yes. And yes, he's yes, like, yes. Bill, I will tell you where Bill is because he would want me to. That guy steals the whole movie. Michael Parts? He does a great job playing. He gets two parts in this film. Really? In the first part of Kill Bill, he played the sheriff. You're that talking Michael Parks now? Yes. Okay. He played the sheriff that, fight, that goes to the bloodbath after they, in the church. You know, he was dynamite in a movie called Red Something. There he is right there. Okay. That's Michael Parks. Oh, wow. He also plays this He was also in that movie, guy. that, that uh, 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 well, Kevin was, Smith movie. Well, he's in two. Oh, he's in Red, Red State. Red, he's yeah. in Tusk. Red State. Red State. Yes. He's in Tusk. He's wonderful in Red wonderful. State. Wonderful. Oh, and, and he's been around Love forever, it. but he was also in yeah. um, yeah, From Dust Till Dawn. He's also he, in, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From and he's dead now, unfortunately. I believe but, he's in the uh, the, the yeah. show, too. No? Tarantino was quoted as saying, if you ask any filmmaker... Most filmmakers, who their favorite actor is, they're going to tell you it's Michael Parks. Really? He was a cult favorite of so many filmmakers. Yeah. They just loved the And guy. he used to do that. That He, he started off on a, on a, on a television, television show. That was, television he was a show. motorcycle yeah. guy. Then came, I want to say then came Bronson, mm -hmm. but it was then came somebody. Yeah. And it was a motorcycle show. And he was just a loner out drifting around, mm -hmm. you know, banging chicks. And, exactly, uh, yeah. And, and He's great. Doing whatever he did. But in his film, he got the, the, the way, the reason he ended up playing the Spanish character okay. was because the day they were doing the table read for the Kill Bill films, the actor that was going to play that role didn't show up. So Quentin said, would you mind reading that part? Interesting. He did such a good job at the table read, he says, you're playing the role in the movie. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. The, the lesson. Uh, look at that. I love, back, I love backdrop Me scenes too. like this. Then there's Robert Richardson, the DP yeah, yeah, with yeah. the white hair. Okay, cool. The lesson that is always show up to the table read. How did you not go. on a Tarantino film not, for crying it. out loud? But there's him with Michael Madsen giving some direction. Comes to my mind, you know, watching Game of Thrones, the final table read. Oh, that was great. And you see, well, they uh, find out what happens you to see their Kit characters. Harrington, and he finds out he has to kill. Yeah. Uh, Cersei, well, you know, at the end. Not Cersei, but, yeah. Well, he has to kill her at the end. He has to kill Daenerys. 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 Uh, yeah. Our our little dragon queen. Exactly. And he started to cry. He started to cry at the table read. I know he did. And he looked over, and there was Amelia Clark sitting there, yeah. and she's crying yeah, that was a touching too, moment. like he has to kill and her. And that was chronicled in the HBO documentary of the making of The Last I Season, saw, exactly. called The Last Watch. I know, it's they on do HBO, show. You can see it. Wonderful. Really but wonderful. back to this movie. Back to this that movie. That fight scene in the trailer was awesome. It was. It, there's so many good there things about this There were great fight film. scenes, but even in Kill Bill 2. So his, much great choreography. Great opening scene with Vivica Fox. In the house. In the yeah, house. That was great. Her daughter is there. Yeah. And, oh my God. And they're still talking, Uma and Quinn about doing the third Kill Bill movie. I wish they would. Yeah, I, I mean, wish they would do it. Again, this one. comes down to Quentin wanting to stop after doing one more film. Ten, right. He wants to do a solid filmography of ten films. So if but that's the case... he's already passed ten. How many he's ideas? eleven now. Yeah, well, he, 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 he technically sees the Kill Bills as one film. So okay. that's how we can get away yeah, with still, it. still... And then he ignores his first film, My Best Friend's I Birthday. Know. You know? I know. But, you know, I understand where it's he's coming from. It's very bizarre to me, but... But it's a shame because how many movies could we have gotten? Here we now go. Now on to Death Proof... Which I gotta was say, part of Grindhouse. I love this film. This is my least favorite film of his. Okay, I love this movie. Uh, I, it, it really is. I, I just like. I just like the whole um, stuntman aspect well, see, of I it. See, I like that. Yeah, uh, and I love Kurt Russell. I love Kurt. He's I think, great. And he's the bad guy in this. He, he just wants and to kill everybody. The lead too. Yeah, he's the lead. I mean, it, it, this is Kurt Russell's film all the this way. This is Quentin's take on a slasher film. It's really a B movie it all is. the way. He deliberately it's though, a, on purpose. Exactly. Because it's, that's what it's Grindhouse in the Grindhouse. Grindhouse. And, and the other don't know what that is. Well, Grindhouse is just a, it's kind of a takeoff on the old 70s films. When you used to go to drive-ins and they 
always did play that that trumpet kind, you know, and then yeah, and then you know they show the you know the popcorn thing going up in the air and the sodas. And it was always a double bill, two two films, exactly trailers in between. Always it was precisely so, but it was a driving, it was a driving film. So it's with the grindhouse, exactly, is a reference to in fact. And this was released as two films. And the was was Death Proof and also Planet Terror. Planet Terror, I think, was first. No, but that's a grindhouse film. But I'm saying they were released together as like a three and a half hour event. You yeah. together, I saw it together. You go, oh, okay. you sit down for Planet Terror, then they have a bunch of trailers for fake movies, that, which were that, awesome. That, that, yeah, that was and then wonderful. we go with the Death Proof. Well, I think they did do a trailer for the uh, Machete, which yeah, they made two movies on. I which know, was awesome. Robert Rodriguez due did. to popular demand. And finally, they yeah. fi- they had one that um, uh, Machete in space. They, the, Rodriguez is hinted it's still wanted to do that. Bullshit, but uh, but yeah. right now, it was a fun thing to do. Yeah, but it didn't yeah. catch on, but it was fun. It I love the first Machete movie. It's a Robert Rodriguez film. He did the second one too. Lindsay Lohan is in that film. She even she's good. Uh, De Niro's yeah. in the film. I, yeah, a, I like the first one. I like it the too. second one. So I know. Good. But you know what's interesting about both these Grindhouse films? Rose McGowan you say is both. Both Grindhouse oh, you're films. Meaning Planet Terror and, and Death Proof. Okay. Rose McGowan is in both films. She is in. De- is she in this? She's in this too. I don't remember. There's her a picture in this of her film. coming up. I believe. Is yeah, it? she's in there. I don't remember. But she's her almost in, uh, the lead in Planet Terror. Well, she is the lead. this, she's no. kind of a, a she sub is character. the lead. Yeah. I don't remember her in, in this film. Yeah, like, she's I, in this. Is, is it not uh, not Rosaria Dawson? She's, she's in done. this too. Yeah, she's in this and, too. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Zoe Correct. Bell, the stunt woman turned actress. Well, is in Zoe this. Bell is just now in Once Upon a Time she's in Hollywood. She's in that too. She's kind Tarantino of a blonde her. Australian chick. Yeah, and she's a great uh, stunt woman. I don't think she's the world's greatest actress, though. No, she's not. Well, her presence on screen is not so good. It's not. No, she comes off like a guy. She does. Well, she was in with Thurman's stunt double, I believe, throughout all the Kill Bill films. Exactly. Exactly. And rightly so. But you can tell Quentin had a good time making this film. Yeah. It's fun to watch, but I just don't love it. It's not my favorite. You know, I like to see. I like. You know, Quentin really comes across like a bit of an an a hole when you see him. It, it's not so. I mean, you feel that he's a wonderful guy in his heart, but the way he talks, he's very, you know, nasally, and he, he sounds like me, actually. I was going to say, yeah. You know, but there's a very similar. Uh, and I am assholey. There's no question about it. I think it. it depends on his mood. There's, uh, he by snaps the way, there's our, there's our blonde. Uh, with the green hat. Yeah, Zoe, Zoe Bell. Zoe Bell yeah, right there. Stunt, yeah, Sun actress. Rosario with the short hair there. Yeah, and then to the Who's left of her. Now with uh, Cory Booker. She's Ooh. dating Cory Booker, I know. the presidential candidate. That's my boo. That's she's, my boo. That's my boo. It's Cory Booker. Last, it's my boo. And he says, that's my bae. That's my bae. That's my boo. That's my bae. Boo bae. I know. But look at Kurt right here. Kurt. He and looks he, so cool and, in this movie. I know. He really does. And, you know, I love the fact that he built this car yeah. that's made, you know, uh, so that he'll survive any, like, head-on collision. And he'll purposely, you know, get these girls these in chicks, a serial yeah. killer way. He gets these girls to sit in the front seat, and then he head co- collisions on. They die, and the, and I'll tell you, the crashes in this film really well done. Are so well yeah. done, yeah. you feel like you're in a car crash. I agree. Uh, the only thing is, is that you know, yeah. His car, like you know, this car's indestructible. Yeah, just, and, and what about all the DNA that's all over these cars? If somebody comes True. snooping, he's gonna be pinged in a second. Yeah, I know. I but, guess we uh, gotta just take that out of our mind. Know, as I, we it do. It's a, we'll check your brain at the door exactly. kind of aspect. But still, uh, I, I like this film a lot. It's an easy watch. I just it felt is. that Quentin had this these meandering, long dialogue moments with these girls, with these. Just well, the, so does much every is shadow. Yeah, has. but these, this, this was especially. Who's he hugging here? Uh, he's got, he's got, got his hand on somebody. somebody's neck. He does. But I remember that there was a story that he Maybe was... Maybe she's the fluff girl. Maybe. You know, she's just there to keep him... Could uh, be. Keep you know, I just want to put my hand yeah. uh, right there. But I, I may but move it, down a But little. I read that he was so impressed with the script for this movie that he sent some of the dialogue to, to Bob Dylan because he thought Bob Dylan would enjoy <laughs> the word play. Never heard back from him. Oh, well, yeah. do you blame him? Here we go. Glorious Bastards, Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Brad Pitt's film... Uh, Brad Pitt, his have, first time working with him. I love Diane Kruger in this movie. She's excellent. She's oh so good. Goodness. There's a big card game scenario there. I love that there. scene. Love that All too. in German. I great. need to watch this film again. It I is watched on Netflix. it again two nights ago. It's on Netflix. It is. I watched it on Netflix. I got to see it again. I, I really do. I love this movie. It's one I, it's, of my favorites It's a great of his. little movie. It's a great looking film. Yeah. It just has a very, uh, I, I think it's one of his first real where he really submerged into an epic kind of a film. Yeah, it's a big uh, scope, just, too. It, it is. It's not just kind of, It doesn't feel like a mini Tarantino. There's Eli Roth right there yeah. who has gone on to produce you know, and all the hostile films. Exactly. Cabin uh, Fever. He just did this uh, Green Inferno. with, uh, with And he just <laughs> did the, the Death Wish remake with Bruce Willis. Oh, there you go. I, I think he's a decent director on I his own I think this right. is my favorite of Tarantino's films after Pulp Fiction. Really? I really enjoyed this okay. film. And a lot of that is due to the amazing performance by Crystal Vaults as Colonel Hans yeah. Landa. He mm-hmm. is this 
This you say Christoph Waltz. Waltz, Christoph you, Waltz. Oh, uh, you said Waltz. Well, I think that's how he say it in German. Yeah, okay. I think. I'm pretty Possibly sure. So. But he he is this this Nazi that is tasked with hunting down Jews. They call him no, the Jew absolutely. hunter in the film. Absolutely. And he is precise and he's just a wonderful character. So many great scenes with him in this movie. And I agree. of course he won his first of two Oscars. Two Oscars, the second and one he won for Django uh, Django Unchanged. Django yeah. Unchanged. And this uh, this for me was an introduction to Michael Fassbender who plays a British oh, operative. Very good. You know, there's something about this movie, just it's so beautifully filmed, it's so beautifully acted. Uh, you know, it does take liberty. It's the first time oh, of Tarantino literally takes uh, uh, liberty with, and with uh, embellishment yeah. of changing history completely. You know, let's face it, he, he kills Hitler and all the Nazis. Spoiler the, alert if you haven't seen it Spoiler alert, now. but come on, listen, it's still worth watching just to it's see him film. kill. He blows everybody, you know, in this massive it's inferno. It's such a cool film. Yeah. There's Daniel Brühl right there playing a Nazi in every single movie he's in and many, these many days. times. Many, many times. And don't times. forget, we have the lovely, the wonderful lovely. Melanie oh, Laurent, oh the French God, actress. Please. Who, if you haven't seen my heart, this, see this. My heart beat it. She did a beautiful film a few years ago with Christopher Plummer and Ewan McGregor called Beginners. Beginners. Check I, it out. I said numbers the other night, but it I knew what you meant. It's a yeah, yeah. wonderful movie. Yeah, it's a wonderful and movie. And I believe and Christopher Plummer won awesome. the Oscar for that, didn't he? He did indeed. He won Best, Best Supporting. supporting. He was well fantastic. Deserved. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Brad plays this pompous kind of character. I don't really care for the Brad character in this. I, I think it's a good addition to the ensemble cast I, I agree. of who he is and so forth. But, uh, you know, uh, he kind of plays the same character in that movie, Fury, uh, later oh, on. Oh, the Tank movie. The Tank I movie. I like that movie. I didn't love it. It was, right. it. It love was it, okay. It was all right. uh, that had, uh, what's Shia his face? LaBeouf. Little Shia LaBeouf in yeah. it, who's crazed out of his mind. But uh, this is such a great little film to it's watch. It's a fun it's, it's film. It's a kick. It's fun, and it's and it's really an immersive, epic it is. drama. And it's got comedy too. It's violent, but it's got comedy as well. It's almost like a satire of Schindler's it, it, List. A little bit. A you little know, bit. Just, you can say that. You know, it does. You know, and Schindler, of course. It doesn't know. go into the camps. No. But it, my it, God, this movie's like uh, eighty-five percent Nazis. It, it really you know? is too. I, I, and I really enjoy it a lot. And it's a, a lot good of Nazi You really film. should revisit it. I will revisit yeah, it's, it's it. I'm going to revisit all of his films because yeah, well, I have watch, to be honest. I haven't watched the, oh, the whole bloody affair of Kill Bill. I'm going to watch that. I'd like to see My that. My wife too. wants to watch it with all me. All right, so. cool, cool. Where but, can you see that though? Is that it's not on Netflix? I have it. Oh, you do? Yeah, it was on. I believe you can I buy have it. it. No, you too. buy the Blu-ray. Really? You can buy the it. The whole bloody affair. Yeah, it's available. No, it's out there. How, Came out in 2011. Four hours. Yeah, right about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's about the same length as both films. But it's put together in one, and it has right. an intermission, it has, oh. which is kind of cool. Okay, so there's 10 minutes down the drain. Roughly. And here we go, Django Unchained. Here we go, Django uh, Unchained. I like it's, this film. Me too. It's his first foray into a Western, although he calls it a Southern. Okay. Uh, and Jimmy Fox is a freed slave. Christoph Waltz, again, he plays a dentist turned bounty hunter yep. who ends up teaming up with him. Right to go save Django's wife from a slave owner, an evil son of a bitch played by Leonardo DiCaprio. There's a black lady in this film. What's her name? Uh, his wife, his play, the wife. She's played by, um, um, what's her name? She's in the show Scandal. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, uh, what's her uh, name? Washington. Uh, uh, Carrie, uh, Carrie Washington. Carrie Washington. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. She's spectacular, and I love her and in this film. She's great in this. And she Leo really is. Amazing I think Leo's this. terrific in this movie. You know, he cut his hand open in this movie. Did he? There's one scene where they're having this big banquet at this dinner table. Right. And he's having a rageful speech. And he goes, Rah! and he smashes his hand on the table and shatters either a glass or an ashtray. Ooh. Cuts open his hand. You can see. He just keeps on going in the scene. Does he? And uh, it... Was, it's in the final cut. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Oh, wow. He really was really good in this movie. I thought he was excellent, too. And he was uh, up I for mean, Oscar. And he was a bad guy in this film. Yeah, First I remember, time, really. I remember him sitting in the audience waiting for the, them to call his name. But it went which they didn't. To his cohort, Mr. Christoph Waltz. There you go. Once again. Which, hey, if you got to lose Christoph. to him, that's okay. Yeah, that's fair game. Had him not, he not been nominated, he might have won. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, then Sam, Sam Jackson, Jackson playing once a again. despicable the kind house. of Uncle Tom. He's an ass kisser. He's a house Well, not Uncle Tom, but he's a house kisser. That's what he's called. Yeah, he's a house kisser to Leonardo. Leonardo's character, who was the Uncle Tom. Big time. And the they, all guy. the rest of the stage resent him. Yeah. You, you, you turn coat, whatever no, they want to call it's, him. You know? It's kind of a cool film. It's a and, really and cool film. And it's a big spectacular. I love the... It the, is. It's almost got a Scarface kind of ending there. A little there, bit. Very, yeah. Where, the, you know, he's got this gun and he's just mowing Which people down. Which reminds me, not to cut you off, but before I said I was going to mention something about the music. In that final big Scarface-like ending, right. Tarantino drops in, poor decision in my opinion, a rap song. Totally takes you out of the movie. Oh, really? 
You don't want to put a rap song in a period piece? That didn't no. work for me. Very true. Other than that, it's a beautiful film. I, well, they were just kind of going after the character created by, by Jamie Foxx. Yeah, I guess. I, I think they were doing it more as a, There's Quentin. There's Quentin. Uh, he actually he's in the film for a brief moment. Quentin looks like he's part Cherokee right there. A little you bit. Know, you look at him, you know. Some uh, of the promotional stuff in this movie. Either when, that or he's got a totem pole up his ass. I don't know. Either one. It's hard to tell. But you know what's funny is that when he makes a movie, I feel like a lot of times... And some of the directors do this too, is that their wardrobe when they're on set almost is almost like it's subconsciously influenced by the tone of the film. He started well, wearing course. a lot of cowboy hats in this movie. Well, of course. Uh, other movies, uh, you know, uh, um, I saw behind the scenes of uh, Once Upon a Time in um, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. He's wearing a lot of like Hawaiian shirts, oh, kind of like Brad, oh, you know. Okay. Anyway, so you're saying that, that Quentin reflects. What he wants yeah. the, 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 the yeah. feeling of the film Either to be. Either on purpose or it's just a subconscious thing. I think it's thing. probably a subconscious Could be. thing. Which but, is but cool. Even if it's not, who cares? Yeah. I mean, if he does it, he does and it. And then you have but, directors uh, like Scorsese, Sam, Sam Neill, uh, Sam Neill, Sam Raimi, and my Christopher Nolan, who are almost in a suit when they're directing. Yeah, right. Sam right. Raimi wears a suit every day. I know he does. I know. And Nolan you know is always in like a sharp blazer. The guy who directed Spies, that uh, f uh, Paul Fugue. Paul Feig. Paul Feig. He does too. Yeah, yeah. He always wears a like a three-piece suit yeah. kind of thing. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, it's kind of interesting. If you're the a little, director, you know, got the little handkerchief sticking out of his pocket. If you're a director, you have to have a cool look. And I would argue there isn't a cooler looking director out there than David Lynch. That guy is like the coolest person on the planet. Well, he looks cool. He's got a cool persona. He's just he's, so relaxed. He's relaxed. You know, he's all American. I, I, he's I don't think awesome his guy. look is also great. I think he I looks mean, awesome with that hair and the war. He looks cool. Well, yeah, but like usually it. he's got like a little ascot on. He's always got those Sony, those same old yeah. MDR I, 60s I, I think that he's he had really on his cool. head. If it's you watch the look, second look. coming of, of Twin Peaks yeah. and you do the behind the scenes, as yeah. I've now watched twice, exactly. I'm, I'm going to go on my third venture towards the, the return of, of Twin Peaks season. But behind every every episode, all 17, there's a whole hour oh, making of footage. There's Kerry Washington. And I think Jamie Foxx is great in this film. I think he's good, too. I, yeah. I really do. It would have been uh, interesting to see what kind of movie it would have been had Will Smith taken the part. Oh. But um, Jamie was no, great. No, I think Jamie was great. You know, he was great. And there was a Robin Hood remake that you didn't want to see. See, and, and I, I ended up you, liking it. Yeah, I did yeah, too. And he was in. And Jamie was great. He was in pretty that good. Film. I got to say, he really was. Yeah, I eat crow in that movie. I liked it better than yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It wasn't great, no. but I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought. Absolutely I would. true. I still, I still stick to my statement that, that they're beating a dead horse now with Robin Hood. Okay. I don't need another well, Robin no, Hood. No, I don't need another Hollywood. Robin Hollywood. I compel you. I, I do didn't not even like the need Russell another Crow. Robin Hood I didn't movie. Like the Russell Nobody Crow wants it. I didn't like the Russell Crowe one. I, I, I didn't um, care for anything about it. And see, that movie could have been so much better if they dumbed it down. Because originally, he was going to play two parts. Yeah. He was going to play Robin Hood, and he was going to play the Sheriff of Nottingham. And then somewhere along the line, that idea went out the window, oh, and okay. I lost interest. Well, that would have made no sense, though. Well, it would have been too... Totally different characters. Well, I understand that. But, but I think they were going to maybe make them brothers. It, it I don't know. It would have been very difficult for poor Russell. who would have had to shoot the... the, the well, How not many twice. actors have done that? Well, well, very true. Tom very Hardy's true. done I mean, it. You know, Jean-Claude Van Damme has done Murphy it. Eddie Murphy has done it. Eddie you Murphy know, done it a million times. played all six characters. And here we go. Bam. One of the worst films Quentin has ever made, uh, in my humble opinion. I actually highly disagree. I like, I the like film. this movie I a lot. I like it, but Quentin ruined the whole it's film for me. It's a slow burn It's a three and a half hour film. It's not three and a half hours, No, it is on... Oh, it's more than that. Well, if they... If you were talking about the Netflix, the Netflix where they Netflix. chapterize it. Yeah, they chapterize it. Yeah, there's three chapters, know, two hours There are piece. two versions of this film on Netflix. Right. As there's One is the film as a whole, about three hours. But no, but it's, then, it's like three and a half. Whatever it is. Yeah. Then they made it into several chapters where it's almost like a limited series, which I've yet to watch. I'm going to watch that soon. I will too. The whole movie takes place in this haberdashery. It's These a, guys it's a are play. stuck in a, it's really a play. snowstorm. It yeah. truly is. And there's a long sequence in the stagecoach, which I thought was awesome too. At the beginning. Yes. That's very cool. This is a really cool film. It's not a bad I film. Like this movie. I, you know, and I like the little murder aspect. Of course, Who Sam Jackson's it? there again, and there's Tim Roth. In my opinion, this you is know. one of Sam's best performances. I think Sam's I excellent I was almost going to use this ah, as but, one of my favorites. But didn't Jennifer Jason Leigh, didn't she win for this? No, she was nominated, I think. She should have won. She was great. She really is She was really good in this film. I, I love her in I this I loved movie. her in this, too. And she, she was, of course. She plays White Trash so good in this I movie. I know. Well, she plays White Trash all well, the time. A lot of times. Times. Well, even in the David Lynch, the coming of the second season oh, of Oh, yeah, she Beast, did. You're right. She's in a van with Tim Roth. She is. She is. I know. I mean, they're like old buddies now. Oh, look at that face. That's awesome. I know. You know, it's really, she's just amazing. And this movie has some big laughs too. It's a good film. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, it's 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 a t it's three hour and a, three and a half hour, three hours basically inside this thing. We have a murder mystery mm -hmm. goes on, cool. and then the whole film is just ruined and devastated by Quentin Tarantino. Not once. 
but doing two narrations. He never okay, should have done. I agree you with just you. saw this, but why did he do 100% that? 100% I agree with die? you. Why did he die? It takes you out. It takes you out of he the film. He should have just oh used another actor like he does in all his movies. Exactly. Because you know it's Quentin. You and know it it's totally him. Takes and you know you he's out. the director. And now, oh, Quentin's narrating his own film. You know why? Because he likes to be in all his movies, but I guess he couldn't find a role well, for himself. You know, so yeah, but then the Hitchcock, Hitchcock found a way to be in his films. But He'd do a cameo but for But in the background. I know Exactly. Not in the background. In the front ground. Hitchcock was always in every film. I know, but, but I'm saying it's, it's, it's like something it's background. quick. I'm saying well, it's a was? quick little thing. It was thing. a cameo. It's not something that's a known. role. Yeah, but you know? Quentin ruined the film. I mean, well, and not it didn't that, ruin it for me, but it took me out It's like of we're it. all idiots, and he had to explain. He couldn't just do a flashback, which he could have. He could He didn't even have to narrate it. That's he could have just done a little, do it, you know, whatever. he could have done the old TV White noise, like, I know. like Chris does. Like in our the static, shows. I know what you're saying. The, the, yeah. the television exactly. static, just it to, works you know, well. To, exactly. Yeah. But you know, Kurt's good, and it's Kurt's kind of a it's a murder mystery. You know, like a horror film, we see characters just slowly die. It was off. great. And we're not going to say who, you but know, it was great. Yeah, a lot but of fun. It, it's it's a rather fascinating. And Michael Madsen is a big role in this film. Michael's He's great back again. And we have Walton Goggins in this film as well. Bruce yeah. Dern. Yeah, it's, you it's, know, it's you've a got good Quentin's, cast. You've got Quentin's little his stable. Yeah. His stable of, of foxy whores. I agree. As Lou Reed once said. And, uh, you know, that's what it is. He has his stable of people that he uses, and he plucks from this and that, and he says, okay, hey, I got a, hey, Mike, I got a, hey, hey, Kurt, Let's I got it. a big yeah. role for you. Come on in. See, to me, you the know? coolest thing I is to be an actor's muse. Um, you know, to, I'm sorry, to be a director's muse, I apologize. As an actor, to be the muse for a director. Like Yuma Thurman was for Kill Bill. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, or you call you multiple times. She was in Pulp Fiction as well. Correct. All his players, Tim Tim Roth, Michael Madsen. He doesn't Madsen. bring her back, though, for any of the later films. Well, just Kill Bill and, and Pulp Fiction. That's it. Well, I'm saying, you know, like everybody else, he'll bring back. A lot of times. But I'd love to, just to be part of that troop. I know. Or what be an one honor. of Scorsese's people. What it's an cool. honor that it is. is. It's yeah, really you know, is. I agree. Especially when you have a filmmaker who's only going to make, let's say, 10 films like he says. Right. Uh, but I would argue he's going to go on to do great things in television, I can television, barely see my, uh, Sam there, but you can there see his is. teeth, if anything he's else. He's great in this yeah. film. He, he really chews is. up the scenery in this film. Literally, right there. He he's does. chewing it up. Yeah. <laughs> and this film uh, had a big thing that happened behind the scenes that the script got leaked. And the film almost oh, didn't get made. Correct, I remember And then that. he changed the movie, uh, changed the ending, right. and then the film got made. But because of that, when he was getting his actors for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he didn't release the script. Everybody had to come to his house, right. sit down on his couch or on his porch Fair and enough. read the film, read the uh, script. Okay, well, you know, he got a little paranoid But it there. was cool. Brad, Brad Pitt was saying that, yeah, he went there, he read it the first time, great. He went back a month later to read it again, and at this time it had dog ears on it, it had coffee stains, mm. everybody was reading the same draft, which was still kind of cool. Yeah, and there's what's his name from, he's in a new That's show called I The said, Unicorn. Walton Goggins. Right, he's in The Unicorn, a new upcoming show on CBS. Yes, yes, and he was also in a, a small role in um, in Django as well. Well, he also, he had a, he's in, well, I, is it The well, Walking the, Dead or something? No, no, well, he was in That's S.H.I.E.L.D., something. he was in Justified. He's a right. very good actor. That's the one. Uh, he had a big role FX, in... FX, um, some FX show that he was on, and he was Well, Justified was on FX. Yeah, <laughs> right, That's And he was one of no, the villains great. in um, uh, he looks the second like a, Ant-Man. Looks like a young Bruce Stern. A little bit, remember Ant-Man Part 2? He was in that, yeah. Of course. I like the He's a good actor. Marvel. Yeah, they're films. fun. They're fun. Uh, but yeah, uh, Hateful Eight, I definitely recommend checking it out. And, and here now we go. On to, on to film number, part of time. basically uh, film 10 or this 9. This is his 9th or 10th. If we you just reviewed this last week. But yeah, we don't need to spend too much time on uh, it. We but can talk about it again a little bit I here. I loved it. We uh, both agreed that Brad was the best part. Brad was for terrific in this. Excellent. I really felt. And Leo was and Leo astounding was, as Leo well, was great too. I mean, there's great acting going he does on a here. Lot. No question about it. Uh, for me, the film was too much potatoes, not enough meat. Um, it's a two hour and 41 There's minute Brad. film. I know, but, um, uh, you know, and Brad, as I've said, it just feels like Brad's playing Brad here. A little bit. He's just got that Mr. Cool kind of I thing. I agree 100%. You know, and He's of course, such a cool actor. And he wanted to beat up his own son on a plane, though. Uh, which led Angelina Jolie. Well, we don't to, know all the facts of that situation, well, do we? Well, he had had some anger issues towards his one son, who was yeah. a black son, who's an adopted kid. And, I don't uh, think it has anything to do with the fact that he was black. No, it has nothing to do with the fact that he was black. The Maddox or, uh, or whatever? No, uh, that kid was Filipino. Uh, yeah. yeah it was Maybe Filipino. he was Philip. Maybe he was Filipino. Yeah, but I mean, look at this. It doesn't right. matter. I mean, black or Filipino. Looking at it from outside the situation, he got how angry many people at the have kid, not wanted And he went like he was going to punch the kid, and then Angelina just said, that's it. But I think everybody sometimes gets frustrated doubt, at a child. Doubt. You know? Philip Seymour Hoffman exactly. and, uh, 
and Meryl Streep. I'm Street, not going to. I'm not going to judge the situation. You know, I don't know what happened. She just judged it all. I mean, she maybe she's lived with a guy, but I guess there were other issues. There's more to it. There's got to be more be. to it behind Indeed. the scenes. Um, but this film was a fun homage to Hollywood, to classic '60s yeah. Los Angeles. Absolutely. Um, but to me, what I did, I, I think I mentioned this to you after great we, scene right there where with Bruce Lee. That scene's I know. great. I know. The whole play is Bruce Lee. His okay. name is M Mike. Fantastic. Oh, Mike Bo is his name. Fantastic. But I was going to say, look like um, him, sounded like him. Last like week him, after we like reviewed him. this film, I told you I was going to go see it again. You did. So I went back and I saw this film a second time. I know. And what I did with the second viewing was now instead of just taking the film in, uh, no, like no, you no. do the now first you time, study. Now I studied. Exactly. And the most, the the biggest part of the film that I studied was the acting, the performances. Of course. And I got so much out of watching these people perform, especially Leo. He does so much in this movie. No, he does. There's so many layers to his performance in this movie. He, he, he plays many parts, too, because he's playing an actor playing other characters. Correct. It's just an no, astounding it, 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 I performance. Agree. It's the it's the it's the most acting anyone did in this, this film. This guy, I mean, continues to impress me. Yeah, I was blown away by Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, I thought that was his best performance. I didn't care for The Revenant too much. Um, I mean, I, I didn't like it was the a movie. Good film, but I thought he was okay. He was good, but he, yeah. But my my view on that is that the actor wins for the wrong movie. That was a political Very often. win. He won because be. we found out how much he went through for the role. Yeah. Which is great. I know. But I would argue sitting inside that that horse carcass for the night. Yeah. For the and night. Eating bison and he, liver. And he, and he had to do that. He said that was so horrible. That was a yeah, real horse carcass. He was, and he was in the in the water, the freezing water. And all right. That. But I would argue that there's not as I'm not saying that there wasn't any acting in the film but you're a person in that movie reacting to your environment that makes you act so much better than if you're just in a studio I acting. totally agree I so totally for agree. me or that was a, a lived-in performance well that which was is the fun. director who yeah. made him in live a those yeah. yeah and it was an astounding feat of filmmaking yeah it the, really is cinematography yeah. amazing that opening scene with the with the arrows with, flying yeah, and all uh, natural light it's like revolutionary amazing. war Reven it's Indians amazing. versus yes. Uh, the 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 revolution very that you like. Film. Tom Hardy it, was great. It, it, it's very, a great film. Yeah, it really is a great. But movie. I wanted Leo to win for Wolf of Wall Street because there was so much range. Well, he was great that he that. showed in that movie. Who that, won that year? Best uh, actor. 2013. Um, oh boy. Um, let me think. 20, 2012 was. Well, who beat Leo? Well, Had to be, thinking, might have been. Might have been Fastbinder. For, not Fastbinder. No, but he didn't win. Daniel Day. No, for Daniel Lincoln, Day or? won for 2012 for Lincoln. Okay. That was released in 2012. Oh, okay. 2013. Ah, oh, God, I gotta think back. It'll come to me. Okay. But um, I just felt that he just showed, he showed more range in Wolf of Wall Street than most actors show in their I entire career. I thought he was wonderful. And he showed the same amount of range in this film, too. In this film too. And that's what I'm hearkening to is that yeah, yeah. he did just as Far much in this, in this film. Far more in this film. He's he gonna did get a, a nomination of his. I think he will. Uh, no, you you pinned it. He's will. playing act. He's playing an actor playing roles it's on screen. That uh, I mean, it's he's great. really awesome. And he hasn't done a film since The Revenant, so yeah. he's been getting ready and, and you gotta rest a little yeah, bit. And so now he's getting now he's doing a bunch of films. He's got the supermodels. He's busy with things. And he's producing a lot of things, Does documentaries. He? Okay. And, you know, he's a busy guy. There you go. But uh, anyway, I think we've pretty much said what we can. We love this I think film. we've done well, about, I loved it. Uh, you it. We've gone through the entire Tarantino roster here. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful little piece of work. I, I am anxious to see it again because yeah. uh, I, there's just too I much, think it's uh, too much dead weight. You know? I, I know it will, too. It. I know it will, too. But um, I don't know. But let's. Why don't we move on now? We're going to just touch very briefly on some films uh, from Quinn as just a writer. Okay. Uh, in terms of he didn't direct these. You films. mean films as just a writer? It's coming up. Don't you worry. Mean, like. Like the films he does as a writer, he also acts in some of them. Like, like it uh, would probably be like Dawn. a folder that you know the writing stuff. There we hey, go. There oh, we go. Way, this is the film I mentioned earlier, My Best Friend's Birthday. This was the film, the first film he made as a feature comedy, black and white, in 1987. And he directed this. Directed it, wrote it, and he stars in it. Oh wow. Yeah. So I didn't see it. Who the like heck is that guy? Right there. I don't there. know who that is. Well, I don't move know. Move your head for a sec. I don't right? know any of those actors. Crystal Slaw, Alan Garfield, Al Harold, Brenda Hillhouse. I've never heard of any of those. Linda K. Sounds familiar. But he's he's got the second billing there. See if so. I can find this film. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah, film. I'd like to see it too. But anyway, so he wrote that, and then he did uh, he wrote to romance. He did indeed, Absolutely. which was directed by is. Tony Scott, the lovely Patricia. And, and again, this has Samuel Jackson. Again, I, well, of course, he's in one moment. Why one scene. not? We get Gary Olson in one of his best Christopher roles. Christopher Walken. 
right over there. And Dennis Hopper. I know. And that film, too, has one of the best scenes ever when Dennis Hopper and Walken are facing off in that interrogation. Isn't Chris Penn in this also? Uh, Chris Penn, yes. He plays a cop or a FBI yeah. agent. Right, 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 right. Um, Tom Gary, Sizemore. Val Kilmer. Look at this cast. It's a great Incredible. cast. Incredible. Val Kilmer plays Elvis. Yeah, yeah. It's no, a, this is a cool check little Check out And it Romance. really feels like a Tarantino This film. is Margot Robbie's favorite film. Is it? Yeah. She, wow. she, she told that was the reason she Not wanted to surprised. work with Quentin. Not surprised. Great film. Check out True Romance. Came it out in really 1992. Is a cool little film. No, Directed by Tony Scott. 92 or 93? Anyway, okay. 94, uh, Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killers. Now, there you'll see uh, Michael, who is the head of Be Terrific. He's right there. He made a cameo. Here as Woody as Harrelson. The Woody Harrelson character. Bum, bum, yeah. That's a very inside reference. A little inside okay. reference for people who know nothing about what we're talking but about. But for, for people that uh, but, know anything uh, about the behind the scenes of this movie, Quentin really did not like how. Um, uh, Oliver, Stone. Oliver Stone changed his film. I didn't care for this film. It's just a little too ridiculous. You know, I mean, the Rodney Danger it, feel. It's a big satire. I think we movie. have Cindy Lauper singing "Girls Just Want to Have Fun." Or <laughs> yeah, what, but, yeah, I, don't think I mean, so. this movie is so bad. But I, I don't think it's a bad. Oh, I think I, it's a very bold and brave oh, film. I think it's but it got hard. a lot of heat from the media. Yeah, and the, I, the government I, made a, made Oliver Stone go to a hearing because of the violence. Really? Yeah. No, oh, this movie was blamed for Columbine. In I a probably way. do need to watch it again. Yeah, but, I'm going to revisit um, it too. Yeah, it's a Bonnie and Clyde thing. It basically, but, uh, it's Bonnie and Clyde. But yeah. to me, the best part is um, the sensationalism done by Robert Downey Jr., who plays this Australian uh, shock TV kind yes. of like a current affair kind of a guy. Right, right. And he I've was got to go back and see this film yeah, again. Check I really, again. really do. Yeah, I'm going to watch it again too. I saw this in the theater. I'm and sure I, you did. I just didn't like it at all. Yeah, I, all it right. just did nothing for me. Just absolutely, uh, oh gosh, it just was so silly. I mean, I just put little segments of comedy bullshit well, I don't bullshit think it's meant it. to be taken seriously. It's a complete yeah, but, satire. Uh, well, I understand that. But when you're, when you're balancing something on a, on a, on a tightrope of, you know, the direction of a film and you're veering off to put in Rodney Dangerfield. See, I thought doing, that was a bold choice, making it like a sitcom, oh, talking God. about the abuse she went through as a kid. Yeah, but it was, I was it pretty was, brave of Stone yeah, to do that, I thought. Maybe, maybe you can call it bold. I thought it was just poor movie-making choices. You didn't like that. Okay. I didn't care for it. All right. Here we have Four, four rooms. rooms. Once this again, came out in 95. This, guy. Is, this was a, an Film. It had four different films yeah. within the film, four different directors. I remember Madonna was in this. She there was she in is this. On the we right have there. Tim Roth is the guy that Once is the, again. the He's the main guy who's in all the stories. Is that Antonio Banderas he's right there? He's in that too. And Robert you got uh, Willem Dafoe, I see. No, not Willem Dafoe. Uh, uh, no. That's Sammy. Marissa Tomei back there. Oh, is behind it? Tim Roth. Oh, the blonde. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow, look at so that. So this was, a, Quentin Tarantino did one of the segments. Right. Robert Rodriguez directed one. Correct. Wim Wenders and the other one Wim was... Wim Wenders. Wim Wenders, what did I say? Winders. Win Winders. Win Winders. I'm sorry. Tarantino. The other one is, um, I forget uh, the other director. A film by Sam Rockwell? Somebody oh, Alexander Rock Rockwell. Oh, okay. Yeah, there something like that. But anyway, um, this this wasn't a great film. It's not no, my favorite. It's very divided. I it's, thought it's a mess. It's four stories. Oh. To me, only two were really fun. Yeah, I didn't care. The about Rodriguez it. one was pretty good. That's the one that features Antonio. Okay. And then the one that Quentin directed, which was based on. Gee, my watch looks good, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Oh yeah, let's showcase nice your watch. Look at the little, look at the little sparkles. But but the one that Tarantino did was my favorite one. It was called the uh, Man from Hollywood. And it was Once based again, on a Ron Dahl short story. I'll have to go back and watch this one again. Yeah, and I saw this in the theater. Did you? Washington Township I Cinemas. I think I did too. I saw it on New Year's Day yeah. of well, 1996. Well, Tim is in all four segments. He's the bellboy and yeah, so forth. Yeah, he's the guy. Uh, yeah. that's the, he's your he's your uh, narrative glue that takes you through each story. And to me, this was a little bit of a takeoff on the uh, 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 Jarmusch film. You know, Jarmusch did a film called Mystery Train. Oh, okay, yeah, and yeah. That was, uh, and that was kind of a, a that, that was in a set in a hotel, mm -hmm. and I think there was a bomb going off somewhere down the street. I didn't street see that, but I know what you're talking it, about. It wasn't a great film. Also, but it, there was a great... It had the same kind of boring element that this had. You know, you're stuck in a hotel, and you've got nowhere to go. New York Stories was a film like this, too, that had four different stories. Well, that was Coppola, Woody Allen. And got a, had a bunch of stuff. Yeah, to yeah. me, that film was pretty forgettable, except it's, I think Scorsese's short film in yeah, that was there, amazing. There was a with couple Nick great little segments. That yeah, was yeah. great. That was he great. plays a tortured painter right. who's in love with his assistant, exactly. and she doesn't respect him anymore. Oh, and that has some of the best usage of music. The whole opening is him painting. Slow reveal of him yeah. painting with um, Proko Haram's Whiter Shade of Pale. Mm -hmm. And it made me fall in love with that song. Because John of Lennon's favorite song. Love it. John One of my Lennon, favorite songs of John all time. Lennon's favorite I used song. it in the short film I played at my wedding. Did you? I did. Oh, wow. And now from Dust Till Dawn. Yeah, Robert Rodriguez. that Rush song. You know, Time Stands it, it, Still. Yeah, the ending. I love that song, too. Time Stands One of my favorites. Still. So from Dust Till Dawn, I it's like two movies in one. I love it. I know. It. I love this movie. When written by Tarantino, so directed by Robert Rodriguez. So, but it's so cool. But you know, George Clooney's best role. Yeah, still. but who steals the show in this? The beautiful Miss... 
Our, our oh, Selma Hayek. Uh, Selma Hayek. Yeah, when right TV. after she did Desperado. And also, uh, uh, not... Uh, Julia Lewis. No, uh, Tommy, Tommy Cheech. No, no. Oh, uh, Tommy Chong. Tommy Chong. No, 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 no. Cheech Marin. Cheech, Cheech Marin. Marin plays a bunch I of parts. I loved him. He was funny. He does a whole narration about, ah, well, yo, we got the pussy for yeah, you, yeah, yeah. pussy for this, pussy yeah, 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 yeah. for this. I mean, that was hilarious. Was I love the dialogue. This was and a then fun Selma film. Hayek has this snake scene where she, this is a vampire movie. Oh, it is. Uh, but you don't know that the first half is like a heist movie. Well, you know, the, the dawn gives you the teeth did, kind of pointing does. down. But when the critics were watching this movie, uh, like I remember Ebert and Cisco specifically, yeah. were like, we love this first half. And yeah. then it just falls apart with the I vampire. Know. But to me, that's oh, fun. I like the vampire. I love the genre of twist. I did too. It I was, it was a lot a of kick. fun. It was a great fun. This is I thought George Clooney fun. was great. Uh, this, this is, is my one favorite of, role for him still. One of George's first real big movies out of the into Out of ER, yeah. I, I mean, this is one of the first. He did One Fine Day, The Peacekeeper. Yeah. Peacemaker. Peacemaker. Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. Sure. Uh, which was a Mimi Leader film. Not a great uh, film. Not a great film. Nah. And then eventually did Out of Sight, which I love, which is love my Out second favorite Sight. film by Soderberg him. Soderbergh film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we love this film. Why don't we move on? We're going to do a quick bit here. We're just going to touch on our favorite Quentin Tarantino characters. Okay. If you'd like. So this is going to be, uh, we're each going to pick five of our favorite Quentin Tarantino characters. Okay. And then we're just going to go know from there from five to one. I remember what I picked, uh, but I'll just pick up. Well, I have them here. So for you, okay. number five, Mr. Pink from Reservoir Dogs. I believe we Steve have Steve Buscemi. Do we have Steve Buscemi? Can we, we do. Can we I feel like this is if like. If we can't find it, don't worry about it. That's all right. People know who Steve Buscemi is. We know who is. Steve Buscemi is. But there Buscemi, he is right Buscemi. there. Buscemi. There Buscemi. He, is. he was great in this film. He was great in Boardwalk Empire I on agree. HBO also. And he was a fun character here. Yeah. You know, this was the first movie I remember seeing him in. And all my friends after watching this, we kept calling him Rat Bastard. I cannot tell you how many people tell me I sound just like Steve Buscemi. You got the same nasally voice. You got that same nasally essence yeah. that comes out of my voice. No, but he's great in this film. He's, yeah. he's one of the lead characters. I would argue maybe the second lead. There you go. Uh, okay, so my, my choice, my fifth favorite, uh, it's coming up right here. It's Jules Winfield, played by Samuel L. Jackson in Pulp Fiction. Okay. Which uh, is. obviously is a great performance. Well, wait, let me, me move over so you can oh, see you, Sam. Oh, you got to move, not me. No, I got to move. He's great. He, he commands yeah, he, he, this he, whole last you know, scene. I, and this is one of the first times we really saw Sam Jackson. This was a big uh, breakout for big him. Big breakout for him. Big breakout. Because now, he, he's in every film that comes yeah. out. Before this, he was in a lot of supporting irritating. roles. Yeah, I find He was irritating. even in Goodfellas, which people forget about. Was he? Yeah. And he did a, a it's a silly comedy, but in 93, did a comedy with Emilio Estevez, which was a, a joke on action movies called National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1. Oh, okay. Fun movie. No, wait, it's a no, parody that wasn't, movie. That wasn't Emilio. That was with Charlie Sheen. No, that was Emilio Estevez. Was it? Yes. Charlie Sheen did Hot Shots. Oh, correct. Yeah. All right. But, but I love him Point in this taken. film. He's yeah. great in this film. Look He's nominated for an this Oscar. Photograph. What a great Both shot. Both nominees right there. I know. All right, so let's go to your next. Your number four choice is, is Bill, played by David Carradine. David Carradine. In yeah, I love Kill David Bill. Carradine. Absolutely. There he is. There he is. You got to move. Yeah. And He's there's great. Yuma and uh, David, of course, awesome. he who ended his life uh, hanging in Paris. Uh, was it no, Paris? he was in Japan. He was in Japan. He yeah. was doing the autoerotic uh, asphyxiation. It's your, it's your auto Anthony Bourdain who was in Paris, and he Correct. killed himself. Yeah, but he didn't do the autoerotic I don't know if he did the autoerotica thing. Yeah. But he, they, the family was saying that he was killed by the Yakuza because he was going to try to... Uh, Reveal yeah, but he was hanging. Yeah, them. but there was. Oh, you're talking about David Carradine. Yeah, that's what the family was trying that's to spin such it bullshit. as. That's I know. Because he was hanging dressed in women's clothes. He was trying to get He off. had a wig, and he was hanging by. An the embarrassing neck, way to go. You know, and Poor you guy. know the old uh, Schwanz was out, and then he was. Uh, Harry Michael Hutchins did that. You know, that. he was choking the chicken. Let's yeah. be honest, ladies and gentlemen. Well, not the way I and choose to go. That's the way I don't think Mommy anybody. Mommy must be so proud. I don't think anybody. Wants anyway, he was a great actor. I enjoyed him in this movie quite a bit. I did too. Well, he had to come. They had to have a commanding. The person did, yeah. to play You know Bill. who was originally his first choice? No. Warren Beatty. Really? And he dropped out. Yeah, they had uh, some talks. I, I think David would have been better. I think David was Certainly a good Certainly with choice. the Kung Fu, you know, the Chinese. Yeah, I can't see Warren Beatty doing see, all that shit. Well, yeah. I, I can't see. Well, I could almost see him, but, but I, I, this I think wouldn't this have been a, a film good choice. Him. Yeah, I mean, because David Carradine had to, you know, kind of shoot her point blank in he the did. church. Yeah, and, he had the menace. Uh, yeah, I don't think Warren Beatty, I, I don't think Warren Beatty would have wanted to do that film. Maybe he Just for his reputation. maybe. You know, but I enjoyed David regardless. I um, did too. So my number four choice, which I hinted at before, uh, is the character in the Glorious Bastards, Hans Landa, played by Christoph Waltz. Okay, loved it. He's the reason I love this film. Yeah, he won the uh, he won the best actor at that year's Cannes Film Festival. Did he? Yeah, in two thousand nine. Not best supporting. No best. Uh, no, I think it was best actor. Well, he's I could not be in the film all that long. But it's a, he's the second lead. Yeah, I, got, I, have to, I, I have to confirm whether it was supporting yeah. or best actor. You know, but he I won just, an award uh, regardless. You know, of course, I just watched Attila again, 
uh, the you know uh, the angel of death or whatever she the the Attila film. You were talking about Alita. The Ra Alita. I'm Alita. sorry. Attila is uh, yeah, no, famous that's conqueror. The Hun. Yeah. That's the Hun. But no, yeah, Alita's me. great. I love Alita. Alita. And he's great. in that obviously. Yeah, and he is great. And I love him. He's in a that. fantastic. You actor. know, there's one thing about this man. He he never overplays. And I love that yeah. film that he's in with uh, with Michael Fassbinder's wife. Uh, You're talking about um, uh, Alicia Vikander. Yes. You're and talking about Tulip Fever. Yes. He's great. Now. God, I love Tulip Fever. That's a good little film. Oh, I love, you know, Check I didn't out Tulip see Fever it. a couple years ago. I didn't want to see it because you and I were going to review it, so I had to watch it. And I love it. Me too. Same thing. Oh I got sucked into God, it. Oh my God, I love that movie. Film. Oh, it was so wonderful. I and Christoph, that. you know, he just underplays everything. He's good. But he Less has that more. intensity to pull it off. I and agree. He just knows how to do it. He is a tremendous I, actor. I'll tell you, in Alita. He's so likable, too. Even he's, when he's playing a vicious guy. Well, I enjoy yeah, a little him as, bit. Well, as in Glorious, he is a likable kind he's of guy. He's so fun. Yeah, yeah. No, kind of. <laughs> Well, not at the first, the opening scene. No, where but he, he's, the acting, you know, he's you just can't take the your family. eyes off the guy. You know, he movie. knows everybody's downstairs oh, knows. hiding. And he's playing games. And he's playing mind yeah. games with yeah. them. And, you know, you know he's just going to kill everybody. And he's, but, he's and then you just see her running off running in the away. distance. Yeah, I love he that. He knows you'll see her again. And, I know. And he, play, he speaks three languages in this film. He's great, if not four. Well, he speaks... German, English, French, and Italian in this movie. Yeah. And that's part of the reason he got the role, because he was so bilingual. Oh, wow. When he was scouted. Quadlingual. Uh, quad, exactly. Quadlingual. Quad quad All right, so let's move on. Uh, your choice for your number three is going to be Stuntman Mike from Death Proof, played oh. by Kurt Russell. There you go. All right. I think yeah, the I game like show first off a sudden. I like this film. You know, this is he, an he's evil. He's a great performance. This is an evil little film. It There's is. no question yeah, about it. Yeah, I agree. It. <laughs> and he's really not a nice a movie. Guy. This not... is not a nice movie uh, by any means, but I, I just got a kick out of it. I like yeah. the whole, you know, the the the, the grindhouse aspect, and I, I just thought it was kind of fun. No, he, and, and he, he's a serial killer. Look at him right there. Movie. I mean, you know, he's just look at that, that guy. You know, and then you go he back and you so watch cool. him, and you see him in Overboard with Goldie Hawn. Love Hall. Overboard. And you know, he Tango came from Cash, the he fan. came from the whole Shaggy Dog. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, he was a Disney kid. Yeah. And was it Barefoot the, Detective him too? Maybe not. Very possible. Maybe. I don't know. But Who I know he was in uh, he was in uh, the Shaggy Dog. He was. And, he was. Uh, There's so. Rose McGowan, Death Proof, right oh, there. Oh, there in the she is, right there. Oh, look at yeah. her. Rose is a blonde. But yeah, he's great in this film. Yeah. Um, nothing more to say. He's amazing. I wonder I if they're him. good buddies still. Him and Robert Rodriguez, uh, Quentin. I wonder if they're. I still think good so. Friends. I don't see why Maybe. they wouldn't yeah, be. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like I don't uh, see why they have a Robert falling out. Robert has gone into the James Cameron camp now a little well, bit. Well, he's moving with, up the ladder. Alita, there. Yeah. yeah, he's doing some Alita. cool stuff, which is yeah. great for him because he's a he's a great filmmaker. He's a very, very versatile talented. filmmaker. I love. He Sin can do City. everything. I love Sin City. I, I agree too. I think that's, that's a feat. just a great <laughs> it's piece a great of work. I, there's nothing that looks like it. It's a beautiful uh, film. Somebody, uh, Frank, what's his name? Frank Miller. Frank Miller. He went off and made his own film. The uh, spirits, this, oh, which was, was that horrifying. But you know, it was because of Sin City that we 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 were able to then get 300, because that came after. Well, and 300. Okay. Uh, I don't want to say it took the same style, well, but there were a lot of elements there. Obviously, both based on Frank Miller. Well, graphic loads and novels. loads and loads of green screen. A is, lot is what yeah. we had in 300. The whole movie was green screen. Yeah, but Sin City just had that black and white. No, it was beautiful. And the with stark colors. Yeah. of color. It's a beautiful and, film. You know, the sequel uh, that's so good. I didn't care for it. No, I didn't. Dame to Kill for? Oh, no, that was pretty hard. And that, once again, I don't, well, Rodriguez did direct the film. Well, they, well he directed it with, uh, with Frank Miller. Frank Miller, As is yeah. the first one, I believe. What a shame. But let's quick move on, because we got... Well, uh, Quentin directed his scene. He did. The first and, 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 uh With the yellow Cadillac. Rodriguez made him do it. Yeah, yeah. Because I want you to... Because he, he'd, he'd never work with green screen, because I want you to try this. Oh, okay. And he did. Wow. But anyway, my third choice is Cliff Booth in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, played by Brad the Pitt. wonderful Brad Pitt. Who well, I'd, this is also one of my uh, picks, too. Oh, I agree. This is one of the few we, we overlap. You might yeah, have to we move did. so we can see this cool we shot. Did. Okay. There, there we go. go. But yeah, he's, he's well, great Well, you've got to move, film. man. I'm moving. You're not. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not. I'm only blocking Leo. Yeah, well, but what's this is wrong about with that? Brad. Okay. Oh, well, okay. But anyway, I love him in this film. It's one of All his right. best performances. He's so watchable in this movie. No, he's great. His character's fun. And he, and he looks he's dangerous. You know, he's funny. I love the scene, you know, where he's he's just he's teasing. This is Quentin teasing the audience. Yeah. Brad takes off his shirt. For the, yeah, for he's the ladies. He's up on top for the ladies. Yeah. You know, it's Thelman Louise Part Three. Yeah. He's up on the roof. There's Margot Robbie. You know, in the next, in house, the next over, house over in the Sharon Tate murder house. Which, by the way, I did just find out, the actual Sharon Tate murder house was destroyed. They knocked it down. But now, because of this film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, all these people are making this exodus. I'm like, sure. all night long. 
people are going by this house up on this Canterbury. You mean they're tail. making the pilgrimage? They're making That's the a better word. Well, no, Exodus I mean, mean they're leaving. Well, uh, okay. Or they're Exodus leaving their homes to, to make a pilgrimage uh, right, to good. the house all on right, Cicero right. Drive. Yes, yes, Messiah, uh, Chris. But it, it's very true. Yes. Uh, the, anyway, they're going up to see the actual. But it's not the actual Sharon I Sharon Tate house. They destroyed it. They knocked it down just for the karma aspect. But this of film now is going to have a whole into Hollywood a tour. You know, see yeah, where yeah, it was yeah. made. But look at Brad there. I mean, he, he looks just awesome. looks. He just looks awesome. Yeah. He looks a little weathered. You know. You know, he uh, almost looks there just like he looked in that movie Spy Game with Robert Redford. There you go. That was a good movie. Uh, yeah, that From was like a good movie. The late nineties, uh, early two thousands. I like 2000s. that film, and also that movie Devil's Heart that he made with Harrison Ford. The Devil's Ford. Own. Devil's Own. Yeah, that wasn't a bad go. movie. It was okay. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I yeah. know the movie had a lot of production problems. Yeah, it did indeed. But, but I enjoyed uh, that too. But there, you know, you look at these two guys and, uh, you know, uh, who outacts to who? Well, Leo truly. I don't know but if they could have been. But not an overacting you way. You often have to say, could, could, could Brad have played the Leo role and could Leo have played the Brad? Leo could have played the Brad role, but I don't think... Brad could have played the Leo role. Oh, because, I think only you say, because of the age. He's a little too old. No, no, no. <coughs> There's too much acting going on with the Leo role. You he's don't think Brad be, could do that? I, I, you don't I, think no, he's as versatile? I don't think he's as versatile. No, not at all. I really I don't. don't. I, mean, I, I mean, I mean, I might agree with you, but the way I'd like Leo, to see him try. No, Leo, and Leo has that comedy aspect when he's doing the hullabaloo with the girls behind. Well, that him. was great. I yeah. could see Brad doing that. I could see Brad doing that. I could see him doing that. No, this was perfectly cast. It was perfectly film. cast. It really I agree 100%. Yeah, absolutely. So let's move on. Uh, okay. Your fourth, your well, let's say your second choice. We're getting down to number one. Is Vincent Vega, Pulp Fiction, played by obviously Mr. John Travolta. Okay. So that was a great uh, shot. You know, I, I, do I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think I chose John because, uh, because of the, you know, the, the, the re-coming, yeah. the, the reinvention of his, of his acting career. That, Which is that awesome. Quentin so beautifully made uh, prominent to we, the people of the world. Because uh, it was I, like, you know what? It was, it was an like appreciation for of, Quentin. Came Say, out, listen, yeah, exactly. I like this guy. Exactly. And he goes, this guy got a bad rap. It's not, it's not always the actor's fault that the movies tank. Sometimes the movies Very just, true. Tank, they suck, you know? Yeah. A lot of things happen in editing, and the actor does what he can. It's, it's out of our hands. You know, yeah. that, once you leave the set, it's but, done. But he really played a character here. He's great in this He's movie. He's wonderful in this movie. He's awesome um, in this movie. You know, Sam Jackson, whatever we see on Sam Jackson in various films, there's always a major part of Sam Jackson. Is always in every single film of he ever does. That's the, he, he's, he's always well, Sam Jackson. He, he's not a character actor. He's not. He he's plays a good actor, Sam Jackson. But he's, he's always he's Sam. excellent. I agree. I remember that one he did, the cul-de-sac. You remember that? That film? was a good movie with oh, uh, Patrick care Wilson. That. Yeah, yeah. And I enjoyed he, he's that. Film. Kind of a nut. That was called um, uh, Lakeview Terrace. There you go. That was a good little film. Yeah, but it was set in this cul-de-sac. Yeah. And, and Sam was the bad guy. In he that. was. He was the but, obnoxious neighbor. Exactly. No matter where you see Sam, even in all the Marvel film, no matter where we I go, I agree. He's Sam. He's always Sam. I agree. Travolta played somebody else here. Yeah. He, he really yeah, we nailed it. never seen him like this. Yeah, he really did. Yeah, and, and Leo he, played somebody else there. I you agree know, we 100%. weren't. But that's one thing about Leo. You know, Leo is versatile. Uh, he's very. And I don't think he's, he's a always character Leo. actor See, as much as he is a lead. In fact, he's more of a character actor than a lead. We don't always I see I would say so. I agree yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, kind of like Johnny Depp. Well, Johnny Depp's probably a little bit more of a character actor. Maybe back in the early days, early de yeah. Leo was more of a of a typecast. You know, a boy's life. Yeah. What's and he was Gilbert Grape, Grape too. Uh, De Niro had picked him for I that. know, I know. And then but, Gilbert Grape was his first Oscar nom. Correct. But then when we saw him go into Basketball Diaries, yeah, that was a different then we side saw, of him. And yeah. that was pre-Titanic. I agree. And, and then, then Titanic God, changed everything. And then now he's a mega. You know what, what, I, what, I, what drives me crazy is people that don't, they say, I don't like Leo. I'm like, why? Oh, because I hate Titanic. Stop it. That's not a reason to hate an actor because you don't like a film, number one. Then people are like, oh, he's just so Well, they Leo. love Titanic. But they Leo love the is film. great. I don't understand why people don't like him. I just showed Titanic to a friend of mine, and she sat there, and she watched the it's whole amazing. film. And she just, I love it's Titanic. So it's so watchable. It's so beautiful. Whatever it's on, I can't turn this it off. This is an homage to the boat. I agree. The 100%. boat is the star of that film, not Leo DiCaprio. Leo wanted to play the role with a club foot. I know. He wanted to play yeah. a little. Uh, yeah, that yeah. was pretty cool. He did. He wanted to play See, with a club foot. And that shows the character actor spinning. True. But the then, and then, then, then James just said, "No, he can't oh, do no, that. no, 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 no." Which we was a good, good choice. Good choice. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so my number two choice is Mr. Blonde, played by Michael Madsen okay. in Reservoir Dogs. There you go. Love him in this movie. There he is. Speaking of a mu music Beautiful cue. segue by our incredible technical crew, you by like the way. That? Look at that segue. Speaking of Stuck in the Middle with you, if yeah. there's ever a song that's been oh, yeah. immortalized like more, in a scene. More, I totally and agree. And you know, because of this movie, you hear this song played everywhere now. I know, I know. Everywhere No, you that's hear. not true. This song was a huge hit before this film. 
Yeah, but this I feel like I didn't group. hear it until Steelers I saw it. Steelers Wheel. Oh, I know Steelers Wheel. Jerry Rafferty. Yeah, and Joe Egan. Great, yeah, right. They Jerry were Rafferty. Known as Steelers did, and he did a great song called yeah. Baker Street with yeah. a fantastic saxophone in the background yeah. that you this hear all the time in not only supermarkets, but just on the radio in general. Cool. Just great songs, but stuck in the middle is a great yeah. little pop. Oh, it song. is a great song. No I question. just feel like this movie well, really this movie brought, brought it back it to, the to the mainstream. Yeah, you know, uh, it, but it, it, but not in a good way. Well, the, I the, mean, the visual. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the, the reference point. When David point. Lynch made Blue Velvet, okay, you know, I know what he you're has say. the whole bit with the the song "Crying" by uh, Roy, by Orbison. Roy Orbison, sung by Dean me. Stockwell, right. But it wasn't crying. It was. Uh, it was called da -da 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 the Sandman in, in Dreams. Correct. Yeah. So I David Lynch calls eyes. up. Yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Orbison. I'd love to use your your song in my film. And Roy Orbison says, "Oh, of course. I give you my permission." If only he Then, knew. when the movie came out, and he sees Dean Stockwell as this pervert, and that you know Dennis yeah. Dennis Hopper is just this raging psychopath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, then Roy Orbison called up David Lynch, and he says, "Oh, I had no idea what you were going to do with my song." And he was very upset. He wanted the song taken out. But he also, had already given he was his probably permission. a very old man at that point. He was from the old, old school. He died fairly young. He was only in his sixties when he did, yeah. when he passed away. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was traveling great. What Wilburys. A voice he had. Oh my God. Amazing. Traveling Wilburys with yeah. George and Tom Petty. Bob I know. Dylan, yeah. Uh, produced by Jeff Lynn. Exactly. But and, anyway, uh, yeah. um, I love Michael Madsen's okay. movie. He he is. I just want to say this. He is the epitome of cool in this movie. Yeah. Love him in this movie. Great. Couldn't have cast this I think role we've better. Gone by, I think we've gone beyond our hour I think we have. That's why we're going to do your number one movie right now real quick is Cliff Booth, Once Upon a Time, okay. which we've already kind of we've touched already, on. Well, we don't have to do it again. We know it's great. No, we know there is. Brad Pitt. No. My number one, your number one is... is Bruce Willis as Butch in Pulp Fiction, there you go. ladies and gentlemen. Okay, there he is. I, this is my second favorite character for him. Number one, obviously, John McClane in the okay. original Die, Die Hard. Hard sure. The first two. But he is great in this movie. He is. His character has such a moral dilemma, and he makes an amazing choice in this film yeah. to go rescue somebody that he probably shouldn't I like the little French have. girl who's in here, too. Maria de Medeiros. Oh, she she's was, wonderful. They make a fun pair. They make a fun pair. He's hopping on the back of the bike and He has off. such a good scene in this movie, and that scene in particular. One of the best scenes in movie history. i got to go back and watch this again. With that saxophone song, Comanche playing in the background, oh, wow. as those hillbillies are banging big rames. Amazing. Oh, God, that's a brutal stuff. Amazing. Though. That was a brutal film. So well done. It was amazing, though. But ladies I gotta and go gentlemen, back and see that film, though. I, I have to watch. I'm going to watch all the Tarantino really should. films. Have a festival. Again. I really am. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen any of these films, please see them. Please do. Um, Chances thank are you you've for seen listening. them over the years, and uh, you know, uh, really, I'm I'm just very grateful that uh, I want to thank. Uh, Adam and Andrew there for allowing us to be come back down here again. Yes, it's just our been technical a, crew guys. Thank joy, you so very much. Uh, really a joy to be back in the in yeah. the wonderful, be terrific studios. I got to say, uh, we were here almost a year and a week ago. Yeah, and that was our exactly last show here. Fifty three weeks. And we, we did, did about a, 16, 17 episodes oh, here. We, I know which we isn't did. Bad. And it was a great we time. Had a great we had time. great fun. Yeah. And uh, it's just good to be back. It's I fun. Say. And we're it hopefully going to come back more often. We'll see what happens. We will indeed. But uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, good to see you, my friend. We'll see you Take guys care. next week with more stuff. I'll see you uh, back in my home I'll doing see you in your car e episode minutes. number 157. Uh, no, actually, this was episode 156. 126. Oh. So next week's 127. Correct. 126, yeah. yes. Because you made an error on last week's well, show. Well, you did because you said it first. You said, folks, well, no, welcome to 126. But, but I go by what I know from the last year because I remember all numbers. I, know I always recall. I know. And a week well, before, that's why I, I you had said 125th. So then I said, okay, this is 126. Yeah. And then you so anyway, went, and, I didn't and catch of course, you're blasting me. No, 125. But no, I, the week well, before, you Well, I also you got it wrong said, in the same thing last week. You I did. also well, you got it wrong admitted the week my before. own problem. That's why you, I said, You guys. got it wrong the week before. Yeah. That's why I was well, I mean, And I always have it in front of me, which too, which is where There you go. Which makes no sense at all. It doesn't matter, folks. It makes no sense at all. Thanks for watching. So we're not going to talk about what's coming out next week. It doesn't matter. We'll just skip that. Who gives a crap? We are going to do the Calvin and Hobbes. We will mention that. We are going to go see Hobbes and Shaw. We will go see that. Hobbes and you know. Yeah. It's but that's a, about it. It's, Fast and Furious. It's just the same film. Pretty they much. They just tack on uh, different... And it reminds me of Tango and Cash Different also, openings and bit. different credits. Yeah. Yeah. But so that's it, guys. Go. That's our All show. All right, folks. We'll see you next week. All right. It's time to go now. Okay. You're just getting up off Goodbye. The, walk off camera. I'm going to go take a leap. Sell it. Yeah. Okay. Sell it. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. We'll see you soon. Louie, where are you? <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Stewart,